there we were rehearsing this fantastically uh, impassioned scene, uh, madly in love with ourselves, each other, ourselves, and uh, suddenly from the back of the theater comes, stop, 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 I can't take it anymore. Leo comes loping down the stairs, all those beautiful stairs in our favorite theater, and stops beside Stephen and says, Stephen, Stephen, what do you think you're doing? The Theater Curation Project was born in the spirit of stewardship over the art, craft, and history of the theater. Its purpose is to curate these stories of our mentors and what they passed on to us to be a resource for future generations. Its goal is to preserve these stories and the lessons within them from being lost forever. Hello everybody. My name is Teddy Moore. I'm 60 years a professional actor, 20 of those years an acting teacher. I studied at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in England, back when some of my teachers were actually walking and talking in the uh, Edwardian era. So if they said this is how people did things in classical theater, this is how they did them. Oh uh, yeah, they were old school, but they, but they suited me. I had a wonderful time there. Uh, my grandmother was uh, Dora Mavermore, uh, my dad Mavermore. I was a heck of a theater brat, brat being the operative word. And my kid sister is Charlotte Moore. You can look up the rest if, you, if you're interested in more. Today I wanted to tell you about a wonderful Canadian actor named Leo Chichery, who uh, was cut down brutally mid-career by a terrible, tragic, dead right away car accident. So Leo was born in Montreal in 1924, which is five years before Christopher Plummer. And I, I don't know what was going on in Montreal in the water regarding acting uh, at that time, but we were the beneficiaries of the fact that they both came from there. Uh, so after his stint in the war, he uh, went to London to study theatre. He went on to the West End where he had a lot of leading parts and supporting roles. Then he went to Broadway where he did the same um, high-end uh, work uh, with all sorts of fabulous people. And finally he was summoned by Michael Langham to come to Stratford in 1960 to be Paris in Langham's unforgettable production of Romeo and Juliet with uh, Judy Harris and uh, Bruno Drusi and a fabulous Mercutio of Chris Plummer's. I've been going to Stratford since I was six years old because my dad was in the theater company in the second season in the tent and I've been watching the actors all my life since that time. What an extraordinary education and what a privilege. I can still remember Martha Henry's fragile young Miranda in The Tempest. I shall never, never forget Cyrano de Bergerac of Christopher Plummer's Never in My Life. Uh, it was a tremendous education for me. But one of the actors who I, I want to tell you about today, Leo Chichery, has stayed with me always. He was so incredibly good looking. He personified the idea of stage presence and he was just terrific at what he did. Um, and when it was my blessing finally to be part of a company, I treasured his collegiality. He was something else. Okay, so the point of my story. Sorry about the history, but that's me. So to the point of my story, in 1968, straight out of school, I was playing Hermie on A Midsummer Night's Dream. My Lysander was the unspeakably beautiful uh, Christopher Walken. And it was a great piece of good fortune for me because uh, Roberta Maxwell had, had to drop out and there, there I was. Um, I did a great deal of understudying at the time as well. And the understudying there was 
then was a bit different because we had full understudy rehearsals. They were under the uh, direction of Powis Thomas and uh, at Leo Chitri. And we even had full blown uh, understudy performances. It was, it, was, it was different then, but I venture to say it was probably because there were less productions and that kind of thing was actually possible. Uh, the, the mentoring story I wish to tell you about today was because I was understudying the role of Marianne in Jean Gascon's 1968 production of Tartuffe, which was fantastic. William Hutt was Tartuffe. He just was Tartuffe. Um, and um, do check out the rest of the cast online because it just is the most extraordinary list of people. Um, lucky, lucky me. Okay, so Leo was the understudy director for Tartuffe, um, and um, the juvenile role of Valère was being understudied by my childhood friend Stephen Markle, uh, who was also straight out of drama school, and so the parts suited us perfectly. We loved doing them. Uh, we thought a great deal of ourselves in the roles, and in fact there was every possibility that we were actually better than the people who were actually playing the parts, but moving right along. Um, there we were rehearsing this fantastically uh, impassioned scene, uh, madly in love with ourselves, each other, ourselves, and uh, suddenly from the back of the theatre comes, stop, 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 I can't take it anymore. Leo comes loping down the stairs, all those beautiful stairs in our favourite theatre, and stops beside Stephen and says, Stephen, Stephen, what do you think you're doing? And Stephen said, oh, oh, well, I mean, uh, well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm acting. I'm, I'm acting an impassioned young man in love. And Leo said, oh, Stephen, Stephen, you are an impassioned young man. There is no acting necessary. Just being. Just be. Just being and saying the lines truthfully. And so let's have it again. Well, I venture to say that that piece of advice was pretty important to the two of us that year. It's perhaps one of the most important things we heard, as in actually really heard and understood. Uh, Stephen went on to have a tremendous career, uh, much bigger than mine, because he went to the States and he cornered the market on the tights roles, he called them, the classical theater parts. And uh, unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago and he will be sorely missed. But I really, really just wanted to tell that story about the wonderful Leo Chitri, whose career was cut short and right in the middle of his fulsome life. And everyone who knew him, who had the pleasure and honor of working with him, and the great, great good fortune of seeing him, will never forget him. So, Leo, from me to you.